the majority of Stargate SG-1 largely centers around Earth's fight against the power-hungry Gua'uld, by the time their empire had entered its waning years, a much more formidable enemy known as the Ori arrived in the Milky Way galaxy. Although the forces of Earth had made great strides in developing their own fleet of spacefaring battlecruisers, the warships of the Ori possessed weaponry and technology that far surpassed most everything that the Tauri had encountered previously. In this video, I'd like to discuss the Ori warships and a few of the significant factors that make these vessels so formidable. The Ori warship, or motherships, are massive in size, measuring several hundred meters wide and almost twice that in length. Despite their mass, they are capable of hyperspace travel as well as atmospheric flight and are able to land on planetary surfaces. While these vessels shine in ship-to-ship -ship combat, they also serve as transport vessels, each capable of carrying thousands of soldiers. The majority of the Ori's forces on these vessels are human, however, each vessel carries and is led by at least one prior, which are hand-selected by the Ori and are evolved to possess psionic and telekinetic abilities via genetic manipulation. The priors of the Ori serve as steersmen for these vessels and are required to bring the ship online through an activation ceremony. In piloting the warships, the priors use a control chair from which they can manage every aspect of the ship. The primary exterior features of the Ori motherships include two massive cylindrical aft thrusters and a large ring device at the front. Inside the ring, a white sphere of diffuse light energy glows. Relying on zero-point energy, the power for the vessel is supplied by a power generator installed in a large room. From this generator, energy is directed upward, presumably toward the vessel's ring structure. Considering its designation as a warship, another significant feature is its armaments. Its primary weapon is a massive energy cannon built into the bow. This cannon proved itself to be overwhelmingly effective against the ships of opposing forces in the space battles presented on screen. A single shot from this weapon was able to pierce the shields of and completely obliterate a Gua'uld mothership as it passed through the enemy vessel. Apart from its primary cannon, the Ori warships were also equipped with smaller pulse weapons located throughout the structure of the vessel which could serve as point defense. These smaller armaments were not nearly as powerful as the primary cannon, however, they proved capable of overwhelming and destroying a Gua'uld Hatak. While the vessels of the Tauri proved themselves more capable when pitted against the Ori warships, they were still not able to survive multiple hits from the Ori's primary cannons, no doubt a significant factor in the hardiness of the Tauri's Daedalus-class battlecruisers was their Asgard shields. In view of the fact that the Asgard were the most technologically advanced race of those who battled against the Ori, their O'Neill-class warships understandably appeared to hold up better than the rest, as they suffered limited damage from the assaults of the Ori motherships. That being said, in their initial encounters, none of the spacefaring vessels deployed against the Ori fleet were able to pose any significant threat to their warships. Aside from their role as battlecruisers and soldier transports, Ori motherships also carried a large number of fighters, which could be deployed to engage in combat with small enemy vessels to provide air support for their armies or in assaulting a planetary target. These fighters were also used as scouts to determine whether or not a world was maintaining an altar symbolizing its devotion to the Ori's religion of origin. In place of dropships, an Ori warship could deploy its fighters which can then be used to drop transportation rings on the surface of a planet through which Ori soldiers could be quickly deployed directly from ring platforms on the motherships. Although the offensive weapons of the Ori warships contribute greatly to their prowess in combat, their defensive capabilities round out their formidable reputation. Serving as the vessel's primary defense are its shields, which are able to withstand a barrage of attacks from various types of weapons without showing any signs of degradation. 
These shields are so strong, in fact, that even when the vessel was rammed by a Goa'uld mothership traveling at maximum velocity, the shield remained intact without faltering. Despite the fact that only a small number of these Ori warships are seen in the Milky Way, it is speculated that the Ori could possess thousands of these vessels. In order to transport these ships, the Ori oversaw the construction of a supergate, which drew its power from a singularity. Due to their inability to match these vessels in ship-to-ship -ship combat, the best defense for the forces of the Milky Way was to either destroy or effectively disable any supergate they were able to detect. While at first glance, many would consider the Ori warships nearly invulnerable, it is important to note that these vessels do have a few weaknesses. It was discovered by the crew of the Korolev that when the warships fire their primary weapon, a slight flicker in their shields would occur. The members of SG-1 attempted to exploit this weakness by moving a bomb on board the Ori ship via transportation rings during this fluctuation in their shields. Ultimately, the bomb never detonated, suggesting the presence of some form of internal dampening technology. Another weakness is located at the core of the ship as its power generator is said to have contained enough energy to destroy the entire vessel were it to be detonated. While it was still operational, the Dakara superweapon proved itself effective in killing Ori forces on board their motherships. However, the vessel itself suffered no damage. The first on-screen destruction of an Ori warship occurred upon the successful completion of a mission by the combined forces of Atlantis and SG-1's personnel. After a wormhole was successfully established from the Pegasus Galaxy to the Milky Way Supergate, the unstable Vortex, aka the Kawoosh of the Supergate, came into direct contact with an Ori ship, cutting the massive vessel in half. It was also discovered that these warships could be fought off with the advanced drone weapons deployed from the ancient outpost in Antarctica. Eventually, the Asgard would go on to develop plasma beam weapons, able to penetrate the Ori shields. With these weapons equipped to a Daedalus-class battlecruiser, along with other upgrades from the Asgard, the Tauri were able to withstand beam attacks and destroy multiple Ori motherships. Thus, the Asgard weapons and technologies gave the Tauri a fighting chance whenever they were forced to engage in space combat with the Ori. Even still, they wisely continued working to expose the truth of their treachery, completely undermining the zeal of their worshippers. And by doing so, they were able to eliminate the threat of further Ori incursions once and for all. Ultimately, the warships of the Ori stand as one of the most menacing vessels to be encountered by the forces of the SGC, and prove to be a fascinating ship providing unique challenges for those who sought to fight against the Ori's most unholy crusade. But I'm curious to know what you think of the Ori motherships. Is there a particular feature or moment involving these vessels that stands out the most to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Stargate and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.